ready to cross Stormy Daniel? I'm ready to cross anybody who comes into this courtroom in an effort to try to convict me. So that was Michael Avenatti, best known for being the former attorney for porn star Stormy Daniels. And now he's stepping into trial against his former client. Now Daniels is accusing him of allegedly stealing $300,000 from her. Now, New York had initially appointed Avenatti a taxpayer funded counsel, but on the second day of his trial, Avenatti asked if he could represent himself instead. And get this, the judge granted his wish. So how exactly will this all go down from here? Well, here to break it all down is criminal defense attorney and anchor at Law and Crime Network, Bob Bianchi. Bob, thank you so much for joining me. So, uh, Bob, is this a smart move for Avenatti to represent himself? I, I, I see a lot of potential issues here. Well, as the great philosophers say and many lawyers say, he who has a uh, fool for a client that represents themselves, right? It's, it's really an unusual thing, but it does happen, Stephanie. And you do have a constitutional right to represent yourself. But here is the concern the judge had, and it's a valid one. Because Avenatti, no matter what you think about the guy, he is a skilled trial lawyer. He's a skilled cross-examiner. Hey, that's just fine because everyone has a right to that. But what the judge said is, I do not want you doing summing up and making statements to the jury as opposed to just asking the witnesses questions. And if you do that, I'm going to stop you and rebuke you in front of the jury. My feeling is, Stephanie, this would be really something to watch. Again, it's federal court, Stephanie, so we don't have cameras, so we can't watch the show. But I can guarantee you, think about it. He's going to be cross-examining uh, Stormy Daniels, the very person that he was in line with for all these years. So it's going to be some, like, made-for-TV stuff. I just wish we could have filmed it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's clear that Avenatti sees himself differently than how the rest of the world sees him. And uh, in my opinion, he's a bit of a narcissist. And I think that it would probably come off a bit harsh, uh, this interaction between him and potential interaction between him and Stormy Daniels, uh, because I, I would imagine maybe things would take a weird turn or get personal. Uh, I find Avenatti to not be very professional, obviously, uh, for many reasons. And, and so how do you think that that might appear where if he's asking harsh questions or crossing the line? You can be very, very careful, because it's one thing if I were representing Avenatti and I went into Stormy Daniels' face, because, well, I'm a lawyer doing my job. But there, the jury knows there's a personal relationship going on here where she's saying, you fleeced me money. So how you're cross-examining her is going to be, the jury's going to be watching that. So that layer of protection by having a lawyer is gone away. And the other thing that's interesting about it is, instead of me cross-examining uh, Stormy Daniels and saying, isn't it a fact that you told Mr. Avenatti X, Y, and Z, or isn't it true that you, you and Mr. Avenatti did this. He's going to have to be saying things like, isn't it true that me and you did this? And isn't it true that you said to me, blah. So that, this is what makes it really strange, because in a certain sense, he's going to be testifying through his questions, if that makes any kind of sense to you. But if the jury gets the impression that she was fleeced by him and he's up there beating her up, that's not a good look for him. So he's got to be very careful. As a trial lawyer, I, I think he knows that. But Stephanie, you hit a major point. Does the narcissist know that? Yeah, that's a great question. And then, um, again, some are suggesting that maybe he wants us to just go to straight to appeal, which is why he might uh, be going this route. Is, is that a potential? No, I, I think quite the opposite. I think as long as the judge puts guardrails in, the, the, you have a right to have the person that you want representing you, and you have a right to represent yourself. So oftentimes, it's usually not a skilled trial lawyer, but this is not the first time a trial lawyer in federal court's been charged with something and represents themselves. Usually, the only issue for appeal is, was the person that was asking questions, a typical ordinary defendant that's not an attorney, were they competent enough both mentally and in a skill set wise in order to assist in their defense. Avenatti's not going to have that because he is an attorney. So I don't see this setting up any kind of appeal whatsoever. Yeah, and obviously um, two different cases here because he was in a lot of legal trouble. Uh, back in July, he was sentenced to two and a half years uh, for the extortion to Nike. Um, so do you, will that have any effect or is this just completely separate? Well, if he gets convicted, it's going to have an effect because all, you know, the, the more it's kind of like radiation, the more of it you have, the worse it is for you. Uh, the same thing when you're being sentenced. If you're serving another sentence, this sentence is going to be consecutive to that sentence. And the judge can take in what they call relevant conduct in your background and your history when they're doing sentencing on the case he's currently here on now if he were to be convicted. So, you know, it all adds up. And I, and I just have to say, just as an outsider watching for years, 
or for a significant period of time, him getting up there and all the news conferences and all the, I mean, he's a slick guy. Make no mistake about it. He's not an idiot. But uh, in a certain sense, he is because guys like me that do this for a living look at it and, and many lawyers and like, what would compel you to do something that is so obviously deceptive, taking the money, there's an agent that knows they gave the money, she's looking for the money, spending it on all sorts of things for his own personal gain. You have to know as a lawyer that you're going to get snagged for this. And one thing we're all taught, Stephanie, in law school, if you want your ticket punched, that is, if you want to lose your license, there's two ways to do that, sure and shooting, and that's taking money from a client or a lying under Road. Yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine that, uh, you know, he would go this route. And according to reports, uh, their office was facing a lot of uh, financial issues. And so uh, apparently, according to reports, they were looking for money and other places to to, um, you know, fulfill his lavish lifestyle and uh, he did have a very lavish lifestyle that's for sure and I've been following the rise and fall of Michael Avenatti since the beginning and uh, he's very arrogant he was making his media rounds we had folks in the media who were suggesting that he should run for president the list goes on so it is incredible uh, this is just an incredible story it's almost like you can't even make it up that just a couple years ago people were praising him and all of a sudden now you know he's dealing with all of these legal issues yeah, I, 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 you know, again, I, if I'm looking at it from my standpoint, I get what you're saying. I mean, this guy's got this meteoric rise in the media. But, you know, all along, like, I, again, lawyers, and, and I know that the public is, like, very political, and they like this one, and so they can do anything, or they don't like that one, they can't do anything right. But as a lawyer, we were looking at it and say, wow, all of these public appearances he's making, forget about the fact that he's bombastic and you may like him or not like him. There are ethics rules with regard to what lawyers can and cannot say outside of court. And, and we have really flipped this scenario lately, and to me it's very frightening, that cases should be tried in a court of law, not in a court of public opinion. So I was wondering for a significant period of time, even before this dramatic downfall with his criminality, it's like, how are the bar associations or why are the lawyers for the people he's attacking, like President Trump and others, why are they not pursuing like ethics actions? Because he's clearly trying to taint and poison the well of the jury pool by being in the media. Look, as a prosecutor, I used to have to give press releases because that was required of me by law. But we were very, very careful that we only spoke about the basic facts to the public. And if they wanted any other information in the media, my refrain always was, and many good prosecutors and lawyers are the same way, you can come listen to court, you can go look at all the court filings, but from this point forward, we're not going to try this case in the court of public opinion, but in the courtroom. Avenatti was breaching that all over the place. But, but now, Stephanie, that is literally the least of his problems. It is, and you made some really great points there. Uh, and again, I'm not a fan of Avenatti. Uh, at one time, I criticized him on Twitter. He blocked me. Um, it's just, it's been interesting just seeing the back and forth and the attacks on Trump. And also, too, like, I don't feel bad for Stormy Daniels. I'm not a fan of hers either. So uh, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on this case. We appreciate you, Bob. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Of course. Coming up next.